Unlike size or mass, color isn't a physical characteristic of an object. It's a construct of the mind. So our eyes detect rays of light of various wavelengths, and our brain converts those to different colors. So before the first eyes evolved, color didn't exist. When those first eyes evolved, around 520 million years ago, it caused evolution to go into overdrive. Suddenly, they had to evolve defenses, which included evolving color, such as camouflage colors and warning colors. It's driven the evolution of flowers, for example, attracting pollinating insects based on their vision. And it's also been involved in mating colors. In nature, there are different ways of producing color. Pigment is the most common type, such as you find in many flowers. Fluorescence is another way of producing color, where atoms absorb ultraviolet light, which we don't see, and convert it to a wavelength that we do see. Another way is bioluminescence, when light is produced as a byproduct of a chemical reaction, such as in jellyfish. And then finally, we have structural color. Structural color involves tiny structures, microscopically sized, that reflect and refract light to produce some of the brightest colors you find in nature, such as those in hummingbird feathers or tropical butterfly wings. You may notice that if you take a peacock feather home, the structural color in these feathers carries on shining just as it did when it first left the peacock. In fact, it would carry on for millions of years in that way. Whereas pigments, such as those found in flower petals, will be broken down by sunlight quite quickly. It's also lightweight, so it can lend itself well to commercial products. A jumbo jet, for example, if you replace the pigmented paint used to cover that with a structural color, you'd have a saving of about one ton in weight, which is quite significant in terms of the fuel costs. So one problem with structural color to now is that it's been quite difficult to make, particularly the type that we find in nature. And this has caused a problem for botanical illustrators. There are some plants with structural colors that have been reproduced using only pigments, which is all the artist had. But now we've devised a method to produce pure structural color. And then we've been able to break it up into tiny flakes that we can mix in with a paint formulation. And so when it's applied on the canvas, those little flakes align themselves perfectly and you get the same really nice iridescent effect. Reproducing the structural colors that we find in nature is particularly exciting because we take advantage of the millions of years of evolution in producing technology that is near perfect at doing its job better than we can perhaps ever do. For the first time, we can replace those pigmented paints and dyes with structural color alternatives, which are sometimes better for the environment, sometimes more sustainable. A world without color would be literally dull. We would be void of all those emotions that color brings us, all those joys, all those dangers. We would be missing so much without color.